Hey everyone, welcome to the Juniper Links Accounting channel. My name is Caroline and today we're going to have a look at how to pay salary in free agent. So what the software will let us do is submit RTI submissions directly to HMRC through free agent software. It'll generate the pay slips for us and everything. And we're going to look at how to set that up within the software. So without further delay, let's get started with the video. So before we can actually pay any salary from your company, uh, it's not a simple case of just setting up a payment to yourself and that's your salary. So in this case, you want to make sure that your company already has a PAYE scheme set up. And if you haven't seen my previous video on this, I've put a link in the description down below of how to actually set up a company PAYE scheme. Should be fairly straightforward <laughs> and it takes about three weeks for your payroll information to arrive. So once your company does have these PAYE details, there are two reference numbers. One is called a PAYE reference number and the other is an accounts office reference number. So if you've got these two details already, we can go straight into free agent and actually start setting this up. So this is my empty free agent account <laughs> that we can use as an example for the purpose of this video. So the very first thing we're going to want to do is go to the company settings section. So that can be accessed by finding your limited company's name in the top right corner and then clicking the settings button. So in here we can go to the company details section and you'll notice that there is a section for PAYE reference and accounts office reference. This is where we want to add in those details. So you can see here that free agents provided some little example numbers for us, which I will enter like so. Obviously, you should put your actual PAYE details in there because it will not be able to submit it to HMRC. So I've saved the changes and updated our PAYE details for the company. And the next thing I want to do is go into the payroll section over here. And what I want to do next is change this PAYE and NI payments to quarterly because for the purposes of a single director company or a company with only a few employees, you're not going to need to pay your payroll employer tax liabilities every single month. So it doesn't make sense. So we can do it quarterly and kind of save you having to make as many payments during the year. So you don't have to make four payments compared to 12, which sounds a lot more appealing to me anyway. <laughs> and the employment allowance here is set by default to not claim it. By default, you cannot claim this as a single director. So if you're on your own and running payroll for yourself, then do not claim this allowance. You're not entitled to it. If you are a single director company and you've got an actual employee as well, this can be like a partner, it can be an actual employee, it can be an assistant, that sort of thing. Um, if you're actually paying someone else a salary above the national insurance threshold, then you can claim this allowance. If you've got questions about the employment allowance, I do have a video on that, which you can check out in the description below. And there's also a section here for automatic enrollment duties, which every company will have to comply with. So when you do inevitably get the pensions regulator letter, don't be afraid. Um, it most likely is not a scam, uh, but just to be sure, you can call the pensions regulator directly and see that they have legitimately requested your details. Um, and you can find plenty of information on how to opt out of the whole auto enrollment scheme if you don't want to run one because your company is not an employer for auto enrollment purposes. So for example, if you're running a salary for yourself as the only director, or you've got a couple of directors and only one of you really works for the company, then you can actually just tell them that you're not an employer for auto enrollment purposes and they will stop sending you for the letters on that. Otherwise, if you do have other employees and they do meet the criteria for you to set up an auto enrollment scheme, then of course you'd have to set that up and then the employee would be able to opt out if they wished to do so. Uh, but for now, we don't need anything other than just changing this to quarterly. So I'm going to save that. Okay. And then the next section we want to go to is the my money section. And you'll notice that there is a payroll option at the very bottom of the list. Okay, so now that we've got all of the basic information set up on free agent, we can actually set up the monthly payroll profile. <laughs> we'll just use this month as a reference. So you'll notice that the months run from the sixth to the following fifth of the month. And that is just what HMRC has set as the tax year runs from the 6th of April to the following 5th of April. 
So we'll click on set up payroll. Okay, so on this page, we want to then fill out the appropriate details for the employee you're actually going to run payroll for. So if they're not already set up as a user on free agent, you would have to add them as a user first, which you can do in the settings section again. So I'm going to want to enter the title and then the national insurance number and date of birth as well. So you'll just fill out all of their basic details and then we can go into the employment details section and we want to select this is a new employee if you're just setting up a scheme. Um, if you've already got a scheme and you've submitted payroll in a different software, then you'd pick an existing employee. And then we can enter the employee start date. So I'm just going to pick the 25th of the month as a default. And then we want to make sure that the starting declaration is correct. So this is the first job since the last 6th of April. And they have not been receiving taxable job seekers allowance, employment and support allowance or taxable incapacity benefit. This is basically saying they've not had any other income since the 6th of April. Um, the second option is that they have had other income since the 6th of April, um, but now this is their only job. Or alternatively, they just have another job as well. <laughs> so in this case, I'm going to pick option A. And then the NIC is calculated as director, director alternative arrangements or employee. So director allows you to use the annual thresholds for national insurance calculations. So you'd only have to pay national insurance at the end of the year. Uh, if you're the only director or if both the people receiving the salary are both directors, then you can select this option and you won't have to worry about paying any national insurance until around December, January time. Uh, in the year during the tax year where it actually starts calculating these of course if you're starting part way through the year these deductions will come sooner especially if the directorship start date is part way through the year so the directorship start date apportions the national insurance thresholds appropriately depending on at what point in the tax year you actually started receiving salary as a director um, director alternative arrangements kind of matches what a normal employee would have then the salary deductions for national insurance purposes are done on a monthly basis, just like an employee would be. So I'm going to leave that as director. Directorship start date, I'm going to select that as the third of the month, just for the purposes of this example. Um, normal weekly hours, um, if your hours are changeable, then you can pick other. If you're doing full-time work for your company, you can pick 30 hours or more. Just select the most appropriate option. Um, unfortunately, you can't proceed without this so <laughs> you're gonna have to pick one of them um, and then the employee paid hourly I pick no because for the most part we calculate the salary on an annual basis so there would be no need to calculate this as an hourly rate um, employee paid irregularly in most cases we would pick no because again the salary is done on an annual basis and there's not really any need to change this all the time um, so generally those two would be no but of course adjust for your circumstances uh, payroll id is an optional employee number if you'd like correspondence from HMRC to be using that. Um, if it's just yourself or about two people, then it probably doesn't need to have anything in there. We often leave it blank. And then we get onto the tax and national insurance section. So we'll have to enter the appropriate tax code for the employee we're setting up um, as a default for the current tax year, which is 2021-22. It would be 1257L. So this is just a full personal allowance and tax will be deducted according to this tax code. Um, if you're not sure what the tax code would be, then you can use a 0T tax code with a week one, month one basis. So here are the instructions for that and it's basically where an employee has not told you their starting notices or where HMRC has told you to use the emergency tax code but generally if you haven't had any other income and there's no reason for you to assume that you don't have a personal allowance for the year then you can use a regular tax code of 1257L and no week one month one deductions that would be the default setting there's also a student loan section so if you know that you have an outstanding student loan we would would pick the appropriate one you would select the appropriate plan which is obviously provided by the student loans company they'll tell you which plan you're on and then 
this software, Free Agent, will automatically calculate how much student loan repayments you are due on the amount of salary that you've received. Were you receiving salary under the repayment threshold for student loans, then there would be no deduction for that. Lower down, we've got the leaving details, which we just started, so we're not leaving yet. Um, but if you do have an employee that's leaving, or if you're leaving the employment, you can fill this section out. So you would pick yes, and then the leaving date. And then free agent would automatically generate a P45 for you once that's the case. And this previous pay, this tax year section is for if you have been submitting payroll for the employee or yourself in a different software and you're now moving over to free agent um, and you want to pick it up as you go, then we would need to select been paid for this employment since April 2021. And then you would need to fill out these details here, which can usually be found on your payroll software so that free agent can have the appropriate year to date figures going forward to make sure that HMRC has the correct information. So in this case, I'm going to pick no uh, monthly pay. So we want to pick the basic pay we're going to do this year. And I will pick a salary of 800 pounds for this example and this is going to be again the monthly pay and these options here are generally not used unless there's something extra that you need to put in there and you also have options for statutory pay such as maternity leave or sick pay and finally you've got monthly deductions and lastly the pension contributions that you can set up here to actually enter what you are submitting if you do have an auto enrollment pension scheme set up for the employee and they do have deductions that they want to make. So you would enter those figures in here where the employee gets tax relief on the pension scheme that is registered with HMRC and here for the employer contribution portion. Okay, so now that we've set up everything that we want, which is just a normal salary and the person that we're paying, which is myself, we can create the payroll profile. Okay. So now we've actually created the payroll profile, we can start submitting salary. So you will see that free agent automatically calculates the month's pay for the current month that you set up for. So if you did pick a historic month, it'll set it up from that month. And then to have the other months show up, you would need to first run the month you're on. So what we would do is continue month three payroll check the company details just telling you to make sure you've got the appropriate information on free agent before you submit this to hmrc if you don't have your utr number yet the corporation tax reference for the company don't worry you can update this later when you do receive it so we would now enter the date you will pay your staff generally try to do this uh, about the same time each month and actually matching with the payments that you receive from your company so if you want to pay yourself on the last day of each month then you are more than welcome to go ahead and select the last day of the month um, you might just have to change this because free agent often defaults it to the 25th so let's say we change it to the 30th of the month we review our pay slips it tells us all of the information that we're reporting to hmrc here double check everything and then you can go ahead run and report month three and here you would use your company's government gateway login details so that's the details that you use to actually apply for paye with and you can enter these in here with your password and then run and report payroll and hopefully if everything's been set up correctly you've got the paye scheme registered and used the correct login information and your company paye details have been entered onto free agent the submission will go through fine and it'll tell you that you've successfully submitted the payroll um, so i'm going to not report this and then run month three so you can see what it looks like after it's been submitted and then free agent will tell you that you have until the following month on the 5th to prepare month 4 payroll. So this is going to be for July. So if I try to prepare month 4 now, it's going to generate the pay slips based on the payroll profile that's already set up, but it's also going to give me a warning sign that I'm too keen to do it. We can't actually start submitting month 4 until after the start of the next month. So this is the 1st of July 2021. Um, and often I wouldn't recommend submitting the following month. Uh, unless it was after the 5th if possible. So now you can see the next pay slips that are already on free agent. And the cool thing is, now that this has been prepared, it's generated the actual pay slips for us in the My Money Salary section. So if we go there, and if we go to the tax year 2021 slash 22, which is the current year, and we look at what we've reported. So we've submitted 
the June salary amount. July has been processed but not yet submitted, but we can still see both payslips here. So if you actually click into this, you can view your payslip and actually save it as a PDF if you wanted to. And this is how you can send the payslips to your actual employees if you've got them and you do actually want to send physical copies of the payslip to them. This is how you would access those. So just go to My Money Salary and there would be another option here if you've got another user to select the second user and just make sure the correct tax here is selected and then you can view all of their payslips. And the next thing you'll notice is that there's this balance owed section on free agent which basically tells you that this particular employee is owed £1,600 as of the end of July. So right now it's actually 800 in that case and what that means is that on the 30th of June or whenever you have set up your payroll to be processed on, you would report that date to HMRC, submit the payroll, and you can set up a payment to yourself from the business bank account for this total amount here that it shows on the balance owed section. So if there are tax deductions, if there are student loans deductions or auto enrollment deductions, it'll reduce the total balance owed to the employee. And you can pay the employee the net figure which is shown here. And now I bet you're wondering, but what happens to the amount that we didn't pay them? So we know we paid them 800 and let's say they had 200 pounds worth of deductions. So in this case, your company technically retains that money in the business account in order to pay that over to HMRC. So the employee receives the net payment that you've sent them and the remaining amount of that £800, which is the gross pay, that would be shown in the taxes, PAYE and NI section of the software. So if we went here and select the appropriate tax here, it will add up the total amount that your company owes for each month for each employee as well. So you can see exactly how much your company will owe HMRC when the deadlines come up. But that pretty much wraps up how to actually set up and pay yourself a salary through using free agent software. How to actually pay yourself the salary? Well, it's just a case of logging into your online business bank account and setting up that transfer to yourself on the date that matches your payroll submission to HMRC. Um, of course, if you've got a limited company and you're working for yourself or you have a partner and you want to have everything taken care of for you, then we do have an accountancy service that includes running payroll uh, and all the other tax submissions, for example, corporation tax and VAT. So if you are interested in taking up a full accountancy service then feel free to contact us at hello at juniperlinks.com and we'll do our best to help you thanks so much for watching till the end of the video i hope you guys enjoyed it if you did then feel free to click that thumbs up button so we know that we did a good job if you're interested in more content like this then do consider subscribing to the channel and if you've got any questions and need help feel free to leave a comment in the section below thank you so much for watching and i hope you guys have an amazing day